Today you'll learn how to set up live chat for WordPress. So I'm gonna show you how to use this live chat plugin. Now this is a free live chat plugin for WordPress. I've got it running in the corner of this website here. This will work on any WordPress site, any theme. You can add this live chat widget on here. I'll show you how to set this up and how to customize it with your own colors and branding and photographs and things. So very simple to do, it just takes a few minutes. I'm Alex from Ideaspot, let's get started. First thing we do is head to talk to, that's talk.2 and we click sign up and we just fill in some details and then we click sign up. Choose a language here, fill in some site details here and you can add extra team members here but I'm just gonna go ahead and install the widget. Now to install the widget, you can either use that code here and put that into the body of your pages or you can use a plugin for most of the common content management systems. Obviously WordPress is what we're gonna use today but they've got other ones here. So we'll go with WordPress and download that plugin. So you can either get it from their website here, or you can actually just get it from the WordPress repository, normally under plugins and add new on your WordPress site, just search for talk to there and you can go ahead and install it from your own WordPress website. So install it and activate. And then back to our setup page, I'm gonna click done here. And from here, you can take a tour of the dashboard and they'll give you a brief tutorial on what the dashboard does, but you can also just click no thanks, I'll take it from here. So let's do that. But now that our account is set up, I'm gonna link the plugin to our talk to dashboard. So let's go back to our plugins on our WordPress site. We've got the talk to plugin installed and active. I'm gonna to go to settings here. And then we're gonna to go to account settings here. And we're gonna just log in. That's the same as when we signed up to talk to. Email and password is the same. And then we log in. So let's go ahead and do that. Just pop my details there and log in. Now that we're logged in, we can select the property. That's idea spot in this case and my idea spot chat widget. And we're gonna use that selected widget. Now it's successfully added the widget to our site. So now we can head to our site and we can see if this is actually working. So sure enough, we've got our little chat box that's popped up down here in the bottom right corner. So by default, it's green. It's got that little, we are here uh, text on there and we can customize those. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, but I just wanna show you the behavior of how it works by default. So after a few seconds of being on the page, you should get a default welcome message. So it'll pop up and say, welcome to the site. If you have any questions, you can um, ask here. So I'll let, um, I'll let the, the chat box go ahead and do that. And then we can go ahead and look at customizing the actual chat box and adding um, knowledge base articles and those kind of things. So here we go, we've, we've got our little chat message popping up here. So that's our default message, welcome to our site. And we can start typing in here, press enter. You can even add attachments and emoticons and things. So um, I'll just type a test message in here. So uh, test message, and I'll show you how that goes through to our dashboard. So back on our dashboard, you might've noticed there was an audio alert. I'll show you how to customize that in a second because I don't really like that phone ringing noise. I can change that quite easily, but I'll show you where the messages go. So you click on monitoring there and you've got one active chat that we just activated then. So we can go there, we can see our test message and then we can go ahead. Um, I can join the chat here and it will say that um, it's joined the chat and you can type hi here and it'll go back to our chat. So you can chat using the dashboard. I'll also mention that you can chat using apps. So you can use a mobile app for Android devices, that's on Google Play. You can use Apple devices as well, iPhone or iPad. You can use Talk2 to, to chat to your users on there, or you can use the desktop like we've been using here. Now, the first thing I wanna do is customize that alert audio signal. So let's go ahead and do that. So to change the audio notifications, we go to our settings in the top right there, and that's manage sounds and notifications. And I wanna get rid of that cell phone ring. Let's change it to something a little bit more chill. Um, marimba melody might be better. So that sounds a bit nicer. Let's click save there. So successfully updated and close out of that. Okay, now let's work on the actual appearance of our chat box. So we can go to the settings down there. That's administration. So this is our property overview. So first thing I might do is customize the photo. So let's put up a logo for that one. We can just go here and upload a photo and save it in. So that looks a bit better there. I might do the same thing for my user profile as well. So we can go here and we can edit the profile and same thing again, just add an image here. Now let's head back to our settings again. And we wanna look at the chat widget this time. So click on chat widget. So by default, we've got a green widget. The first thing we might do is change that. The site is a pretty dark website. So I'm gonna change it to a black color widget. And then we might go to advanced and we can see all the things we can edit here. 
So here we can actually tweak the size, the position of the widget on desktop and on mobile as well. So you can go ahead and tweak that. I quite like the default settings. The only thing I didn't really like was the green. And uh, I don't really like this we are here thing. I think that's a bit cheesy. So you can actually have a different design. There's lots of different designs. We can click gallery here and there's plenty of different things we can choose from. So just pick something a little bit more tidy that fits fits what your uh, visual, visual style is suitable for. So I might just go with this one maybe. That looks a bit better and save that in. And if you don't want this attention grabber there at all, you can just turn that off, just to toggle that off and then we'll get rid of it and just have the box if that's what you like. I think that's pretty tidy actually. I might just go with that because I think uh, having that pop-up that comes up, up after 10 seconds or so is quite good at grabbing attention anyway. So um, up to you really what visual style you want to go for, but I'm going to keep it fairly simple and just save that on. The other thing I might do, that agent message is in green as well. So I'll just change that to maybe a, a darker gray. That, that looks okay. Just save that on. Cool. Now I'm going to close out here. The other thing worth looking at is the default welcome message. So that is under triggers. You've got a default welcome message here. We can click on that one and there it's written there. You can edit that and change it as you please. So what I'd do here is probably welcome to our side. Just say welcome to idea spot, for example, but you can change this as however you like. So I'll just put idea spot and then I'll probably change that image as well. Again, that's just a matter of uploading a photo. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that's all good. I'm going to save that. It's worth noting that under here, again, the delay is 30 seconds by default, but you can change it to 10, 20, 30, uh, however you like. But I think just leaving it on 30 is probably okay. It's enough time for the user to get a basic idea of what's happening on the website before you hit them with a pop-up. So I think, uh, yeah, just, just tune that to whatever you think is suitable for your exact content. And the final thing I want to cover is the knowledge base. I think this is quite a good little thing that they've got going here. All you really need to do here is fill in the name. I've already done this, idea spot knowledge base and choose a subdomain. So then it's gonna set up a subdomain for your um, knowledge base articles. So you can just set that up. Just pick a knowledge base um, subdomain that isn't taken. You can actually use a custom domain. There's a small fee for that. I haven't tried that myself yet, but the free one works pretty well. And probably the only other thing I'd wanna set up here is just a few links back to your website. So navigational links, I'd just put a home link back to your website on your knowledge base. Uh, add that long one in there at least a link back to your homes maybe a maybe a link to the contact as well so pop that in and link back to my contact page as well so put a few um two or three of those navigational links on there as well and i'll run this, the same chat widget on the knowledge base as well so I'll pop that on there too so that looks all good um, now we can actually start adding articles to our knowledge base the reason we want to have a knowledge base is because when we are using our chat we can see our little icon is there that's pretty good but we can actually when we go to our customer support, you can actually search for answers. So I'd recommend putting probably your top three to five, at least if you've most frequently answered questions, put that as articles in your knowledge base. That'll actually save you some support time as well. So um, you can just type in and search the knowledge base. We don't have anything in the knowledge base yet. So that's why it's important just to just add a few articles right now. So back on our dash, we've got that one called knowledge base right there. And we can see we've got no articles. It's just a, a simple matter of um, adding some articles here. So we just click new article and here we go. This is a lot like writing a blog post. So it's just title, subtitle, and then put some paragraph in there. So just go ahead and fill those out. I've just filled that out with some, some of the articles from my blog and put that in there to cover that article. So I've just got a WordPress setup guide, but just put something suitable for your website in there. Make three, four, five, six of these little articles that cover the main um, frequently asked questions about your site. And then we can go ahead, click update, and let's get back to our uh, um, knowledge base. So now we can see we've got our one article is in there and it looks all good. So now if someone was on our site and they wanted to search for answers, if they, if they typed in say WordPress here, they could see I've got an article on WordPress and they can click that and they've got our um, guide for setting up WordPress, for example. So make sure you fill in a few of those, It'll cover the basic questions that people will ask on your chat. So you don't always need to do live chat. Um, and then obviously we get that live chat either through the dashboard or those mobile apps. So that pretty much covers everything off. So we've got our chat thing basically set up now. The only thing um, with this free version is it's got a little bit of branding down there. If you want to remove that branding, you can just get by the add-on. So that is under our settings here in the dashboard. You can go to add-ons. Uh, where's add-ons? There's add-ons. And they've got uh, a few different add-ons you can do. So you can remove branding. That's $20 a month if you want to remove that branding. The other really cool thing is you can actually employ someone for just a dollar an hour to do live chat for you. So you can maintain live chat 24 seven on your website through their live agent service. So that's um, pretty economical service as well. And there's also tons of features on talk to, but I'm not going to cover everything. I think I've covered the basics to get you guys started. So uh, you should be all good to get started with talk to. 
There's one other little tweak that's going to be pretty common is just in the actual WordPress plugin. So back on my WordPress site under settings of talk to and in here, you can actually see the visibility options. So visibility options, by default, it's gonna show the widget on every page. So you don't have to actually have chat on every page. You can just have it on specific URLs, just paste in the URLs that you want there, or just have it on the front page, for example, just on certain categories or just on single posts. So you can really set this up to have chat on only the things that you want and not the things that you don't want. So um, I'm gonna leave it on every page for now, but um, make sure you tweak that to your preferences as well. So hopefully this was useful. I quite like this free chat. It's definitely the best one I've found. So I wanted to share it with you guys. So just um, hit like if it was useful for your purpose and just say thanks in the comments. Both those things really help the channel. Um, share the video with any friends who might find this kind of thing useful. I definitely think a chat box is really good for um, engaging with your audience. Um, it can really help making sales, especially on um, e-commerce sites where you're you've got custom products or high ticket products where the um, user needs a little bit of um, personalized sales before they'll go through with a purchase. So um, this can be a super, super effective method of improving your e-commerce site, having a live chat on here. So um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.